This is Hello Glass with another Glass Artist interview. What is your name and are you a glassblower? Hi, my name is Daniel Portery and I am a glassblower. I'm a borosilicate worker specifically and uh, I'm out of the Eugene area. How long have you been blowing glass and do you consider yourself a master? Uh, I've been blowing glass for about a year and three quarters and uh, I'm on the way to mastery but not quite yet. <laughs> your favorite style or type of glass to blow with? Um, I love Boro and I love line pattern work in particular. I just like twisting up colors and like really making a visual preference, uh, presence with the glass. You know. What state do you call home for your glass shop? Uh, Oregon, Eugene, Oregon. Do you own or work under a glass brand or an art name? Uh, I usually just work under my own name for right now. Uh, I'm in the works of starting a company, so. Do you make your living solely off glass wine? Um, I would say, yeah, I, I make most of my money in glass blowing. I'm also a full-time student at U of O, so there's a little help there, but mostly glass. If you could blow glass with anyone living, who would that be? Um, what's his name? Jesus. He's over in Austria. I can't remember his name. But yeah, Marcel, Jason Lee, Buck, Nady Biskind. I'd love to throw down with all those guys. Edig? Charles Lowry is a great soft glass. Um, I'd love to throw down with him. And, you know, just anybody that's got skills and respect for their glass. Yeah. What style or technique of glass is hardest for you? Uh, I'd say my sculptural work is pretty much where I'm lacking at. I can definitely pattern up the glass, but uh, sometimes shaping it into a skull or something, I'm still working on those techniques. Name two people that taught or influenced your glass skills. Uh, my first two teachers were uh, Hugh Salkine and Ham was the TA for my first class and so those two guys taught me a lot and then uh, Aaron Cyberson helped me out a little bit there at the end. Is there any style or technique of glass that you would or will learn in the future? Um, I hope to improve my sculptural skills quite a bit because that's really where you create your own style. Like everybody knows all these pattern techniques and how to do this and how to do that but when you can really shape out your own piece and make it distinct um, that's where you start to get your own edge and your own niche market. Name two glass artists that impress you. I would have to say, um, right now, Quave is doing pretty cool stuff, and I also really like what uh, Nady's been doing lately. Those two guys are really impressing me lately. What style or technique in glass amazed you when you first saw it? Um, color and sculptural. I mean, my first introduction to glass, I was in Cornerstone, which is where we're at, and I was three weeks in just learning how to blow glass, and Buck and Laceface and Joe O'Connell came in and made this giant pirate ship, and I was just amazed at how the space that they created and, like, the environment that was just in that glass piece, and so, um, just really presenting sculptural, conceptual ideas, uh, it's really big in glass. I really like that. Kind of what Charles Lowry's doing with Transcensions out in Chicago, uh, November 2nd, I think, actually. Nice. Worst injury you ever got making glass art? Um, I'd probably say the first month I stabbed myself with a 25 mil hot rod into my belly, and that was pretty bad. But other than that, I think that's the worst one. What do you wish to accomplish in the glass industry? Um, I wish to accomplish just like respect and my own artistic development and self, you know, like recognition and for myself. I'm not trying to like prove myself to anybody. I just want to grow as a person and continue on this life's journey. And who knows where it'll take me. We'll see what happens. How does a glass fan get a hold of you or your work? Um, Facebook, Daniel Portery is the biggest way. Spell that? Daniel Portery is a P O R T E R I E, and uh, I haven't been posting much, but there's going to be a lot more glass on there after this, this month of July. I'm really going to start banging it out. So you got three minutes to tell the world whatever you want. Go for it. I just wish that glass blowers could come together more and like really present the whole idea that we have going right now in the movement to the public more. I mean, Marble Slinger is really working on this video and he's going to release it to the public and just getting us more in the public eye and letting people know that we're out here because what we are doing is amazing. I haven't had one person that I've shown uh, be like, oh, I've seen that before, or, oh, that's cool. Everybody's always amazed at what's going on, no matter who they are, and 
just not enough people are seeing it. And so I think if there's any unification, it would just be more publicity and, and good light, you know? So many people try and like blow us off as degenerates and all this stuff, but uh, especially the soft glass world a little bit there at the beginning. And they had their own movement in the 50s, you know? When we started having big kilns and stuff and they could finally do big things with soft glass, uh, they had their own movement with Tuhuli. And we're having our movement and I want a little respect and public eye with that especially since a lot of the techniques we've learned are from them. But now there's techniques that we've pushed that they can take back to soft glass. And so we're pushing the envelope every way that we can. Scientific, color, you know, I mean, and I just want people to see that. I want the world to know that we're going big. I want some, like, Red Bull shit. <laughs> this was Hello Glass with another Real Glass Artist interview. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks.